Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I am Nirav Shah, and with me we have our exec, John Madison. And really, today we want to talk about three main things. We want to go and talk about our SASE into more depth and showing you why we are seeing a global adoption, but then also talk about the flexibility in our solution along with some great new innovations that we are announcing. So with that, John, uh, why don't you tell us more about Unified SASE? And as we all heard, it is part of our company's one of the top three priorities. Yeah, well, SASE is a very broad term. So we thought we'd broaden it even more to call it Unified SASE. You know, if you look at the Unified SASE components, you've got that uh, cloud security, you've got the uh, ST-WAN-based security, and then you've also got security of the applications themselves. So you're providing this secure access and the cloud security from an application perspective. So it's really about secure access for any user working from anywhere to any application with this consistent experience and uh, securing the applications within the cloud as well. Well, it's key because I think users are off the network, there's micro branches, there's offices, there's now OT connected. And so providing that secure access in what we call a hybrid way, what's the best way to get to the application, the most secure way? It could be staying in the cloud, it could be staying on the network, it could be going in between. And, and John, Fortinet, we are always so uh, bullish on technologies and their innovations. So what are the key technologies that we have invested in the Unified SASE? Well, one of the technologies that allowed us to do this is our operating system for the OS. Uh, obviously, we've been working on that for you know, maybe 10, 15 years, and we keep adding functionality and applications to it. And so for us, the, the ability to take 40 OS and put it in an appliance on the network, the ability to take 40 OS, put it in our own cloud and provide the SSC capability, the ability to put it inside a cloud or inside the data center is critical because you get the same operations and policy uh, on those different instances depending where they are, whether it be in the cloud, whether it be on-premise, or whether it be in the data center. So yeah, I agree. The 40 OS is definitely the foundation technology. What else uh, on the SASE part which differentiate us? Well, I think a lot of people, they don't get carried away, but they just focus on the cloud component. It's cloud, 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 cloud. And as I said, the on-premise piece is important as well, but also the client mm -hmm. or the agent, whatever you want to call it, uh, is extremely important. Uh, it, traditionally, that's provided VPN capability. As we migrate towards SASE, it's got to provide the SASE agent. It's got to provide the ZTNA agent as well. It's got to provide digital experience monitoring. Uh, we're going to integrate some of our security components, such as EDR, inside there. So the client, or as we call it, 40 client, is just as important as the cloud piece and the on-premise piece. That, that's great. And you already hinted two great features which are coming up, which we'll talk more, but amazing. So yes, John, I think, agree, uh, the, the agent, the unified agent, is such an important component to connecting to SSC. Um, but, but how do you see that evolving? Well, I, yeah, the software agent's important, but we also have places where we can't get the software agent. Um, we kind of call this the hardware agent, which doesn't make any sense, to be honest, but it's really a thin edge. Uh, it could be an access point. It could be a 5G extender. It could even be a switch. Uh, and we connect that to our SASE capabilities. So in those instances, not only you can't get an agent on there, but you haven't got a processing footprint to do security. So absolutely, you then send that to the cloud. But the key is managing both that uh, function on the premise and in the cloud through the same console. And, and that's my favorite part, that today, SASE is about providing flexible connectivity. We can support agent. We can support agent-less. We can support this hardware agent like AP switch for a micro branch or a thin edge. And of course, we support our ST-WAN integration. So this flexibility is where, John, I think, we truly differentiate in the way we provide unified SASE. Because most customers have all those use cases, and that's the key. Today, I think most people are using SASE for remote access. Yeah. That's it. You need to have SASE across all the components, which includes SD-WAN, and then, of course, you need to implement zero trust across all those capabilities as well. Speaking of zero trust, I mean, it's such an important component. Yes, zero trust is a mindset, but as part of the zero trust, you need to have this continuous verification. And how do you describe the, the way Fortinet uh, 
deploy the zero trust functionality as part of, again, that flexibility. Well, we come back to the agent here. Yes. Because um, I think a lot of the zero trust implementations today just say the connection is good and that's it, they don't check it. Uh, we're able to check every connection that's going on there because something could happen mid-connection. And so the ability for our 40, 40 client or agent to look at the device posture per connection and then feed that into the zero trust policy engine to make changes to the application access is really important. Yep, I love that. Real-time monitoring and a continuous verification is what we provide today, and that is really best of breed and, and great to have that as part of our SASE solution. Well, here we are at Accelerate here in Las Vegas, and we've announced our 40 OS 7.6, a ton of features inside there. Uh, maybe you could highlight some of the SASE new features. Yeah, it's again, it goes back to, John, the way you described our vision to provide that unified SASE. And the first step that we are doing is now, we continuously hear from our CIO the need for providing that end-to-end -end digital experience. Mm -hmm. So now we are introducing a full end-to-end -end DEM fully integrated within our 40 SASE. What that means is, as John talked about, that 40 client agent has now DEM functionality built in. So not only we can monitor the SaaS applications within our SASE point of presence, but can also look at each of the user and their CPU, memory, their Wi-Fi strength, and all those details. So we can now correlate end-to-end -end from a user experience to the SaaS application experience and find out where the problem is. So really excited about that first capability. But also, again, going back to the unification where remote browser isolation. Yeah. Of course, Fortinet has invested into that product, but now we are bringing the RBI functionality as part of Fortisassi as a feature. So as we hear from many times, the CISOs and that the web-born threats continuously increasing. So now with this RBI feature, we can make sure that for the user, especially for agentless and BYOD devices, when they're accessing any web applications or any websites, we can provide them this contained browser where we can isolate before any threats coming in. So really good to see that is coming in. And, and as always, um, as we are going ahead and as you all heard in Accelerate today, data protection is key. So we're continuously adding more data protection features. And then on that node, advanced DLP functionality is now added as part of Fortisassi. What that means is we are going to use our AI and a machine learning based FortiGuard security services and provide the best in class data protection, but also specifically generative AI based uh, detection and having those inter, uh, capabilities are part of our DLP as well. Yeah, and I'm starting to hear um, you know, the data leakage into large language models, and so that capability is inside there as well. And also, even though our own SD WAN is probably the leading class SD WAN out there, we've also announcing the ability to uh, connect third party SD WAN into our 40 SASE platform. Yes, John. I mean, you said at the beginning that flexibility is the key. And that's what I like about our solution is as much as we provide the single vendor SASE and unified SASE solution, we do support organizations where they want to have their existing SD WAN investment using our SSE. So this is a great addition to provide them a good performance and have that connectivity going. But John, yes, we talked about all of those capabilities, but at Fortinet, it's about having the platform, which is on top of our convergence, and how we integrate SASE into other solutions. Can you talk about how we are taking SASE to the SOC and other solutions as well? Well, I think the SASE world is really bringing together the CISO and the CIO. I mean, they start to work together on things like SD-WAN, but SASE really brings those two teams together. And so in our mind, whether it be networking functionality or security operations functionality, they need to come together. We've also heard a lot of customers say, can you help us around that? And so our SOC as a service capability integrated into 40 SASE complements uh, the SOC component of the CISO and works very closely with the networking team. Thank you, John. Uh, uh, so as we wrap up, and we talked about some great innovations, but for CIO and CISO who are looking to have those business outcomes, what does this all mean? Well, you need to look at the larger trend. So secure networking as a, as a market will be larger than just networking by 2030. Just think about that, where that's come from almost nothing 10 years ago. And that's a very important trend 
for the CISO and the CIO because the teams will be working more closely. They'll be able to get operational benefits, mm -hmm. cost savings. You'll be able to automate across both security and networking. So this convergence concept, whether it be in the cloud, on network, at the client, in the data center, is a huge, hugely important concept for both the CISO and CIO to make sure they can hit their business goals. That is great. Thank you so much, John, for your time. Thank you. I appreciate everyone for listening in.